how fast should we move our arms? When you watch the top level swimmers, you'll see sprinters move their arms incredibly fast. And then when you look at the long distance swimmers, unsurprisingly, they move their arms slower. But the one thing you will notice that they have in common is all of them look incredibly smooth in their stroke. When it comes to triathlon, it's not quite so straightforward. You've got lots of other factors. For example, you'll do a lot of your training in the pool, most probably race open water. You'll have other swimmers around you. It's going to be difficult to have an even pace throughout your race. There's just lots of other external factors. So with all of that in mind, is there a perfect stroke rate for triathlon? Before we delve into stroke rates and look at trying to find the ideal world, we're probably going to rewind and explain exactly what we're talking about here. So stroke rate is the number of strokes you do per minute. So each single stroke, and it's basically the same as cadence, and it's displayed as SPM, strokes per minute. But you will need to just check if you're looking at the numbers on your watch or on whatever device you're using, that it is actually displayed as strokes per minute, not cycles per minute. If it's a very low number, say under 50, it's quite likely that they are measuring when you complete a full cycle, so that would be two strokes. You simply need to double that. Now, most smart watches and similar devices will measure your strokes per minute, so you can look at this afterwards and analyze it. But if you don't have that, you can manually work it out, but you'll need someone on pool side with a stopwatch counting your strokes. So they can simply time a 10 second period, count how many strokes you do within that 10 seconds, and simply multiply that by six to give you the amount of strokes per minute. So now we know what it is, how do we go about finding the correct strokes per minute or cadence? Well, in running, it's quite straightforward. It's basically the higher the cadence on the whole, the better. Swimming, it's not that simple. We'll explain why in a moment, but before we crack on, just a quick reminder that if you want to support us here at GTN, we'd love it if you gave this video a like. Even if you're not yet a subscriber, click on the globe and you won't miss any more of our videos. Now for distances of 400 meters or over, you'll see a huge variation in stroke rate from as low as 50 strokes per minute all the way up to 100 strokes per minute. And athletes can be efficient at either end of that spectrum. The 100 meter sprinters can even reach beyond 100 strokes per minute. But what as triathletes do we do with this information? So I'd suggest starting off by looking closer to home and looking at the top swimmers in the triathlon field. And you'll notice that their straight rates tend to be towards the upper end of that aforementioned spectrum. However, they're still going to vary greatly, which basically answers our question. No, there is not an absolute optimum stroke rate for swimming or for triathlon. As we are all different, we need to find our own optimum stroke rate. This is due to several factors, the first being arm length and body size. The longer your arms, then the longer the lever, the more water you'll be able to purchase. But as a result, it'll take you longer to move that lever or your arm through the water. And the same goes for the recovery. If you think about it, the entry point and exit point are going to be much further apart for someone with longer arms compared to someone with shorter. And linked to this, next we have strength, as if you've got a lower stroke rate, you're naturally going to need to be stronger than someone with a high stroke rate swimming at the same pace. So if you think about it, if you're moving your arm slowly through the water and you're keeping hold of that whole water you've purchased from your catch into your pull, you're going to need to be very strong to pull that. Whereas if you've got a high stroke rate, you might be slipping a bit of water, but it doesn't matter because you make up for it with that higher cadence. So it's a little bit similar to cycling. If you think you're in a big gear and you're moving your legs slowly, that's going to be a lot of strength required, a lot of force going through your muscles. Whereas if you were cycling next to someone who was in a lower gear, they wouldn't have the same resistance, yet they'd have to have a much higher cadence in order to cycle at the same pace. So actually, if your upper body is naturally not quite so strong, a higher stroke rate can compensate for that. And your swim background will also play a part here. Did you learn to swim the pool as a pool swimmer? Maybe it's through surf lifesaving, or did you just learn in a more natural, organic manner through doing lots of water sports? The way in which you've been taught and in what environment and with what purpose will all have a natural effect on what your natural stroke rate is now. And finally, your stroke style. If you've got a hip-driven stroke, that's going to naturally be a much slower stroke rate than a shoulder-driven stroke. And then you've got the hand entry. So if you have quite a slow, deliberate catch and you fully extend your arm before you're starting that pull, that's naturally going to be slower than someone who goes in and starts their pull much faster. 
Did you notice we've mentioned a few times your natural stroke rate? Well, there are lots of areas within the freestyle stroke that you need to focus on and perfect before you get bogged down with what your stroke rate is. In actual fact, correcting mistakes such as overreaching or over-rotating or finishing your stroke too soon will naturally have an effect on your stroke rate. Well, that aside, back to the triathlete swimmer and making the stroke more efficient for racing in an open water setting. Now, on the whole, it's thought that having a stroke rate at the higher end is going to be better. If you think about it with swimming in close proximity in the chop, for example, a long, smooth stroke might not be so well suited. When you're swimming in choppy water, well, if a stroke could be disrupted the same as if you've got swimmers near you, you might miss a really good catch and not get such a good stroke. And if you've got a long, slow stroke, you're going to have to wait a lot longer so you can actually rectify that with your next stroke. So the higher stroke rate gives you more chance of being able to keep a smoother rhythm. And the same goes with sighting, actually. If you're having to lift your head up slightly to look ahead to see where you're going, then having the downward pressure of the stroke more often will help just make that a little bit easier. You might actually notice that your natural stroke rate increases without you really thinking about it when you come to open water and especially race setting. But that said, being aware of what your normal number for SPM is in the pool can be really helpful. And then if you know it needs to be higher for open water, you can practice drills in the pool that will help towards that. But overall, with this being such a unique number to you, don't get too bogged down with it, but use it as another metric. So when you're analyzing your swim data and you're looking at how to improve your stroke, you can use this as part of the bigger picture, finding out what is the most efficient for you and your swim stroke. Hopefully you found it interesting, you know what to do to support us, give us a like.